It's a funny old world, the world of Māori politics. Not only have you got the normal BS of politics in general and national politics, but you've got iwi and tribal rivalries, and I'll be honest, probably cultural nuances that I don't quite understand. So I quite often keep my trap shut about Māori political issues because uh, it's hard enough trying to figure out what old whitey politician is doing, let alone, let alone uh, our cousins, our cousins in the world of Māori. But some pers- one person I think always got a pretty good and straight take on it is a um, regular appearer on, on the platform uh, she is a consultant in, in the Māori and the iwi space and she's done a little bit of politics herself at a local body level and she's done a bit of journalism. That's my mate Tina Nixon who joins us on the line now. Kia ora, Tina. Kia ora, morena. <laughs> well, no one saw this coming, did they? <laughs> well, actually, we've been talking about it for quite a while. Oh, okay. um, and I mean, actually, Shane Jones and I canvassed it not so long ago about that. That it, it was there was obviously some dissension uh, in the Maori caucus. So um, we'd certainly been hearing that there was some some people who weren't happy in there. And but just to what extent and stuff. I mean, Shane may have a a, um, a better handle on just exactly uh, where it's at. But uh, no, there was definitely some some gossip coming out that things were not happy and that there was likely to be some defections at some point. All right, so let's have a look first at Mecca Terry. Gosh, when she came to Parliament, she was Kerry Allen's partner. Is there any lesbian in Parliament that Kerry Allen hasn't slept with? <laughs> That's not an area of expertise of mine, I'm sorry. Oh, all right. Um, I like, like... Um, and so, yeah, no, uh, yeah, that's, that's right. She was um, uh, uh, Kiri Tapu's uh, partner. Uh, and um, and to be fair, Mika is a very formidable woman um, and suffers a wee bit from that sort of gruffness, frankness and in-your-face stuff uh, that you get with a lot of wahini toa, uh, which is often a, a, a something that, is held against them, I suppose, in the political realm. And, and she got into little trouble little for bullying staff. Refresh our memories yes, on yeah, that. she was. And by all by all accounts, it was a pretty much over the top type thing. Uh, and she, she, but she didn't suffer fools. And um, she obviously thought someone that she was dealing with um, didn't meet the intellectual standards that she required uh, or the work ethic. So um, she gave them a bit of a rack up. And I think she actually could have physically done something to them. I'm just trying to remember the actual case, but yeah. um, I know at the time it was it was considered to be pretty. So bad she got and... bumped out of cabinet for that, but resurrected yeah. in some ways recently as Minister for Customs and Flood Relief or Recovery. Uh, on the east coast, oh, outside very, cabinet. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with her ability to actually do stuff. She was held in really high regard, uh, and and so despite the fact that she's bolshy, um, doesn't mean to say that she didn't do a good job when she was handed one. But because of that background and that wokey crap that is sort of at the centre of the Labour Party, um, she was never going to be top of the pile to be the next chosen one to end back in the cabinet. Uh, and obviously a bit of renewal was going on as well with Willow Jean Prime. Uh, so she she was definitely on the outer uh, of right. the party, and that would have really missed her um, because she comes, as I said, she's a woman of substance, and that would have irked her. Um, and, and this is just a, like, a, I suppose, a woman's view of, what, you know, someone... Yep. I hold, hold in reasonably high esteem um, because of her ability and her forthright approach to things. You never, you were never in any doubt of where she stood, and uh, we're seeing more and more women like that actually being um, sidelined. And uh, so, uh, you know, big ups for her to bugger off. And she's given what I call the done me hucker approach to the Labour Party, which is the old wakapuhani, um, which is, you know, bearing your buttocks. Well, she's pretty much done that. She's not ringing the Prime Minister. She's yeah. Do, you think, there, do you think it was pure coincidence that he was at the end of a long trip halfway around the world for John the current... John Tamahiri is no fool. John Tamahiri is no fool. He's the strategist behind all this, so the timing would have been well considered. And uh, I think absolutely the fact that Chippy was uh, offshore eating sausage rolls with Prince Charles um, was uh, probably, uh, to him, a really good time to take centre stage. And stick and it up. And so um, he's just... And stick, well, yeah, bearing their buttocks. I mean, they yeah. really have. And it would right. be a very... Um, um, I think a, a a marriage that won't be 
as friendly as a lot of people will think. 